brilliant speed with vibrant service, vibrant broadband internet. Well, here we go on a Wednesday morning, 1030. We got all the food talk out of the way. <laughs> We're all hungry now. Got all the French fry. I don't think we came to a consensus though on French best, fries. The best French fry? Yeah. The best type. That sounds like a show before I leave. True. Yeah. We could do that. That could be next week. Could be next week. Could be. Well, Honestly, we could do taste testing, but they let's, wouldn't be fresh enough. Let's talk to the powers that be. <laughs> we'll see what we can oh, do. Oh, we are the powers that be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about that? Well, it's time for another Vibrant You, and those voices you hear are the three... Amigos Amigo. back together again. Amiga. Yes. We're reunited. Jane is back. I took a two week hiatus. Yes. We were in, we decided to try two weeks in Mexico for the first time with, because oh. we're empty yeah. nesters. That must be tough. It was, it, yeah. Well, it kind of, you know, it's like I just want to get home in my own bed in my own shower. Yeah. You know, I'm, we all yep. wanted to be there. So uh, there's yeah. a lot to be said. I missed you what, guys. In her though. bed and shower? Come on. All right, let's restart. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll shut my mic off now. You guys okay. go ahead. No, we're going to ask you questions. <laughs> we got questions for you. Yeah, we do. Yeah, you're going to be involved in this one. Okay. Well, welcome to another Vibrant You Live. My name is Bo. I'm Nathan. And I'm Jane. And if you tuned in last week, you heard Nate Ellis from Heartland Security. We talked a little bit about some video surveillance, uh, some other security options that they offer for your home, for your business. So if you missed that show, uh, go back and watch that on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. So today... We are talking about basketball. It is March, which means it's March Madness. So we're going to have a ton of basketball coming up. We're going to give you a little bit of tips on how to stream your favorite games, uh, if you want to watch your favorite college teams, or if you don't have a horse in the race and just want to see who the uh, the biggest upsets are, we're going to walk through that and we'll do a little bit of trivia, too. We're going to test Randy's knowledge of college basketball. <laughs> so what is March Madness, Jane? So it's the most anticipated and watched event in all sports. Randy's all excited over there. I, I'm getting my channel set already on my TV. Wow. So everything you need to know about NCAA Division I men's basketball tournament, which has played beginning in what year, Randy? <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard one. They'll, they'll um, be easier than that. It was before March you were born. March Madness? <laughs> um, NCAA tournament, basketball tournament. Yeah. 1948. 39. Oh, okay. Close, not too bad. Less right. than 10 years away. That's close That's enough. right. And then um, basically the NCAA Division I men's basketball tournament is a single elimination tournament of 68 teams that compete in seven rounds for the national championship. And this is a new word for me because I'm going to just, you know, I like basketball, but I'm not like love it's not just a basketball. Yeah, I, know, basketball I, know, but, <laughs> I know, but still, I didn't even know what this was. So it's a penultimate round. Okay. Which is known as the Final Four. Well, I just know by just means final. the second to last, yeah. second to final. Yeah, it's like a fancy just, word for that. If you say Final Four, I get it. Yep. <laughs> anyway, when only four teams are left, so, so do the rest of us get it when you yeah. say Final Four, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. So it kinda, it'll kind of <laughs> kick off on Sunday. This Sunday, you will have Selection Sunday, as they like to call. It. They like a lot of these alliteration words. You got mm -hmm. Elite Eight, Final Four, Sweet Sixteen, Penultimate. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> Selection Sunday. So this Sunday. Uh, they'll be at the conclusion of a lot of the um, uh, conference championship games. So you'll know a lot of the teams that automatically qualify for the tournament. And then there's a, a committee that helps decide well, all the other teams, basically, that are going to – did they have a good enough season? Did they have a good enough record? Did they play good enough teams? Uh, there's always controversy, it seems like. Uh, this team should have made it. That team should have made it. Who's the biggest snub? Who's the – you know. But it's kind of fun to watch because you'll – I think it aired on ESPN or some network, and a lot of times they'll show footage of some of these like smaller schools, and all that the team will all be together watching it on TV, and they'll see them their team get announced, and you get to see the reaction. It's pretty fun to watch. Mm -hmm. um, they probably don't show all the people that are waiting to hear their name and don't hear it. That would be a little sad, but <laughs> at least they get you to see the people that are super super happy. So and that would be on CBS, by the way. So yes. If you oh, is it the tournament? The yeah. selection yep. show is okay. Right. Uh, and also, uh, we should mention the the ladies tournament. I believe starts. Started this week or starts tomorrow, maybe. They have uh, their own NCAA tournament. Actually, well. I think they start uh, like the same week, but they, overlap. they alternate them. You okay. know, like, you know, and those whatever. ones are usually ESPN, I believe, is they host the latest yep, tournament. I think you're right. Um, so, for those that don't know, Jane mentioned 68 teams 
it's basically four divisions of, of 1 through 16 seeds. If you're thinking to yourself 16 times 4 is 64, not 68, you're good at math. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, so some people say 64 teams in the tournament, though uh, I think maybe 10 years ago they started um, four games ahead of time to get four more teams in. Uh, they call them the play-in games. Um, so it's kind of teams that were on the bubble, like, ah, oh, should they get in, should they get out? We'll let them play their way in. If they win, they're in. If they if they lose, they're out. So that's now considered kind of the first round. Um, mm-hmm. Take it or leave it, if you will. But um, So in what year, Randy, did, the, did it grow from the original eight teams? So in 1939, there were only eight. In what year did it grow to 16 teams? Any guess? I'm going to go to my original 1948. Close. 51. Mm, okay. <laughs> 51, they went to 16. <laughs> And then they doubled to 32 in 75. And then in 85, they went to 64, which is kind of considered the, the current standard. And then, like I said, they added those playing games 10, 15-ish years ago. It's been a little while now. The, the term March Madness was first used by a high school um, official in 1939, the year of the first tournament. But it was brought into kind of the modern-day term for the tournament, March Madness, when uh, Brent Musburger used it during coverage of the 82 tournament. So since 82, it's been widely popularized as March Madness. Mm-hmm. People also know it as the Final Four tournament and stuff like that. But Yeah. All right, Randy, we've got some trivia for you. Are you more? ready? More? Uh, yeah, yeah. We, got some, we got some more. Ooh. All right, so what team owns the largest comeback, but also the second largest lead blown in tournament history? I'll give you a hint. They're, they're in the tournament quite a bit. Um, let's go with Michigan State. Mm, good guess. Duke, actually. Okay. All right. All right. And then what player is the all-time leading scorer with 407 points in Only the history the of the tournament? tournament? I'll, give you a, I'll give you a hint. We just mentioned the school that he played for. Mm-hmm. Um, I, let's go with Grant Hill. Christian Leitner. Oh, yeah, that yeah, was probably okay. only a yeah. year or two off. Well, Grant Hill threw a pass to Christian Leitner. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. 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 Play together. All right. Now, this one, I don't know if I'll be very impressed if you get this one. So this is a Notre Dame player, but he holds the NCAA tournament single game scoring record with 61 points. This was in 1970. Any ideas? <sighs> 1970. Um, Kelly Trapuca. Wow. Did you just make up a name? No. <laughs> he actually played for Notre Dame. Yeah. Well, Austin Carr. <laughs> but he, Yeah, but he would have been like in the later 70s. Okay. No. That's, that's close. That's better. I didn't know any Notre Dame players. All right. And then what team has the most national championships with 11? And they had a run where they actually had seven titles in a row. Oh, it's got to be UCLA. Yep. Yep. There you got you go. that one. And then last but not least, which coach is the winningest coach? Uh, in the tournament history with 101 wins. Mike Krzyzewski. Yep. You got it. You got and he it. coached for? Duke. There you go. It's interesting. 101 games he won. Yep. I think it, at the most you can win each year is like six. I think if you win If you win at all, you, yeah, you're winning I'm six sure. games. So. so that means he was in the tournament for a long, long time if he accumulated 101 wins and they had a lot of success. Yeah. I wonder if he ever made it when he coached Army. He coached, I think, a couple spots. Was it just Army before Duke? I think Duke? it was Army okay. before Duke, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think they were good. I can't remember, yeah, if they, I, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. So, um, when is March Madness, Jane? Well, the selection kicks off this Sunday, March seventeenth, Saint Patty's Day. And Randy, you had mentioned it's on C- CBS yep. instead yep. of okay. And then Nathan, you had some kind of fun stories about all of that with the yeah, selections. Yeah, I, I love watching Selection Sunday, though I usually am looking to see if the Gophers will get in and, and oftentimes they don't, because yep. I'm a Minnesota Gophers fan. I don't think they're expected to make it this year unless they run off and maybe win the Big Ten tournament. This It starts tomorrow, I think. Uh, maybe today. It starts today, yeah. Um, and uh, so if you, if you win your conference and you're, one of the, you're in one of the major conferences, you'll get automatically qualified. But if you don't, you're looking to get voted in. So Selection Sunday is fun to watch. Like I said, you get to see those reactions from those sometimes smaller schools that are just praying they get in. Like, we had a great season. Please put us in the tournament. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you get to see those cool reactions. So I like watching that. But. Perfect. And so the first tournament game begins this Tuesday on the 19th, and that's the play-in games that we mm-hmm. had talked about. And so the, the official MC, NCAA championship is going to be Monday, March 8th, at the State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. Yeah, it's been a, we've hosted... I remember we hosted the the championship just a handful of years ago. I feel mm-hmm. like in the cities here, but so why is it so popular? Well, they call it March Madness. One of the big reasons is because a lot of crazy upsets happen. Uh, you know, when you get a single game that just decide who wins, 
it's not always the bet, better team on paper is going to win it. You know, you could have a, an amazing team. We've had a couple of number one overall seeds lose in the first round. So you'll have a major school that's considered the best school in the country or one of the top couple best schools, and they'll lose to sometimes a kind of a quote-unquote no-name school that you may not have heard of. So mm-hmm. when you got one game riding on everything, you see a lot of upsets, buzzer beaters, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and in basketball, I mean, you have five guys on the, in your starting lineup, so it's you can get a pretty good team with – you know, without having to recruit a ton of guys in football, I mean, you have what 52 players. Yeah. So usually the Ohio States of the world, you know, those those big teams, Alabama, they're always going to be in it. But basketball, you can sneak in with a, a good group of guys that have played together for like three years or four years. And then also, it's really cool. I like uh, NBA basketball is what I like to watch. So the tournament's a time to look at the up and coming players, see who's going to be maybe in the next draft. And it's fun to see guys that are no names that like. Steph Curry had a run with Davidson back in the day. And, mm-hmm. you know, from that little skinny kid to what he is now, that all started with March Madness. So it's really fun to watch. Yeah, you, you can see some of these players become household names because of one tournament mm-hmm. over, you know, in March because they have such such a good games and stuff like that. It's pretty fun to watch. I love it. Watch it every year. You know, if, you, if you've if you heard of teams, are you making a bracket the year, this year? Are you making a bracket? It's very, very popular mm-hmm. in workplaces, in schools, with friends, to everybody write their own bracket, predict who's going to win the games, pick a champion. Mm-hmm. Uh, the chances of, of get, picking your bracket perfectly is like, one in billions. I can't remember the number. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. It's so obs- it's so impossible. Usually they'll they'll say usually after the first weekend or second weekend it's like there's only five brackets in the entire country that are still perfect and they always lose out as well. But mm-hmm. it's really really fun to fill out your own even if you know nothing about basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can kind of still I've been in tournaments where I've played against people or brackets where we all submit our bracket and I lose to people that have, don't watch a single second of it just because it's fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because so much crazy stuff happens. I once lost to someone that picked it because they pick which colors they like better mm-hmm. on each team. Or, or mascots. Or ma- yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, things like that. Good stuff. So, I mean, that's that's why in a lot of camps there's a lot of attention. Of course, if you have a school that you went to or are fans of, then that's another reason, obviously, you may want to watch. But if you're trying to watch it, if you would like to watch it and you maybe don't have cable, you don't have satellite, or you stream, or you want to see how can I watch it, pretty much every all, all the games will be on four different networks. So you got CBS, uh, TNT, TBS, and True TV. Um, the the True TV, TBS, and TNT are Turner networks. So if you have access to those channels, you can watch every single game. Uh, if you don't currently have access to those channels, you can get all of them for as low as $22 uh, for the month of March if you want. Um, HBO Max, which I think is now just called Max, mm-hmm. is only 10 bucks a month for their ad package, and they carry all the Turner games, so TBS, TNT, and True TV. And then Paramount Plus is 12 bucks. And uh, they carry CBS. So between 22 bucks between those two, you could stream every single game if you want. Um, also, I use a service called YouTube TV. It's about 73 bucks. That's another option. They have all those channels, you know, Hulu Live, Direct TV. There are some other providers that just carry all those channels, which is another option. YouTube TV last year, they launched a feature called MultiView, specifically made for the tournament, where you can watch two or four games at a time, which is really cool. <laughs> very handy. They often have four games going at a time. I wouldn't recommend it if your TV is not very, pretty large, because you, once you watch four different games at a time, if you don't have a very large TV, it's going to be hard to figure out what's going on, would be my guess yeah try not don't do it on your phone no yeah <laughs> uh, you'd be like my brother he he him and his co- high school buddies take vacation during the tournament he sets up four or five tvs in his basement and they have a, t- a dedicated tv for each game and they're just kind of obsessed with it so that's one route to go but um so if you do decide to subscribe that you know the day that you subscribe and you want to cancel yep. it it'll give you 30 days so, yeah, so you mm-hmm. could do it yep. for one month and then cancel it and be done with it if you want if that's mm-hmm. all you want to watch move on to the next but yeah and if you do have some more questions about streaming tonight at the co-op we actually have our dreaming of streaming event so that's tonight at 5 30 if you want to learn how to you know watch some some of your favorite sports tv shows Snacks. Oh, oh yeah. And yeah, Randy's got his snacks ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> so I recommend stopping by, snacks. even if you've been there before and want a refresher, that's going to be tonight at 5.30 at the Meeker Co-op office. And if you do want to you know, watch this show or any of our previous shows, you can go on our Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, just search Vibrant Broadband. And you can also just give us a call with any questions at 693-3231 or visit our website, vibrantbroadband.com. And as always, you can just catch us here Wednesdays live on KLFD at 1030. Thanks for having us, Randy. 
And thank you, KLFD. And thank you, audience, for listening. I'm Jane. I'm Nathan. And I'm Bo. Tune in next week for another Vibrant You Live. Brilliant speed with vibrant service. Vibrant broadband internet. Vibrant broadband internet.